Hello, my name is Faith Gernhardt. I'm a fiber arts enthusiast. One of the fiber activities that I enjoy is tatting. This first series of videos is going to demonstrate the loop method of tatting using Martha's Snowflake. This is a free pattern available at the Handy Hands website. The URL for that pattern is hhtatting.com forward slash free dash patterns, all lowercase. Historically, tatting was made with very fine thread. It was used to make lace objects such as collars or cuffs or edgings around tablecloths. Today, we use different sized threads to make very different products. This is an example of Martha's Snowflake in different sizes of thread. This is size 80 thread, or quote, traditional tatting thread. You can see it's very, very tiny. This is size 20 thread. It's readily available at any place that sells yarn. Joanne Fabrics, Handy Hands, etc. This is Martha Snowflake made with size 10 crochet yarn, and that's the size that's recommended in her pattern. This is just the first round made with four-ply crochet yarn. It would make a nice coaster, but the full pattern would be way out here. Tatting is a series of alternating half hitches around a core. The two alternating stitches together form the double stitch, and it can also be recognized as the lark's head knot from macrame. Putting a space between two double stitches creates a pico. A pico is used for decoration or for joining. In this first video on tatting, I'm going to show you how to make rings, chains, and picots using the loop method. I've seen that method in print once, where it was the third of six methods. If you are a lefty, watch this video to the end, where I attempt to demonstrate the loop method left-handed. We'll start with two cords. I would use this cord for macrame, but it kinks too much to be practical for tatting. I'm tying the cords around the sewing machine I inherited from my mother. You may recognize the square or reef knot that I'm using here. The yellow cord is going to be my pattern, or stitches thread, and the blue cord is going to be my core around which the stitches are formed. To produce the double stitch, and this is true of all the non-needle methods of tatting, you change the tension between the pattern to the core, then back to the pattern, etc. It's the movements in manipulating the core that differ between tatting methods. Bring the pattern under tension, drop the core behind, bring the core between the pattern and the core, and then back above the pattern, release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, work your stitch up. Now you make another half hitch in the opposite direction. You release the pad tension on the core, bring the pattern under tension, drop a loop in front of the pattern, bring the bobbin above and then back between the pattern and the core, release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, work your half hitch up, and now you've formed the double stitch, also known as the lark's head knot. The one thing that's really important is that you always are able to move the core easily through the pattern. I'm going to make another double stitch and then I'll make a pico. Bring the pattern under tension, drop the core behind, bring the core between the pattern and the core and then back above the pattern release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, work your stitch up. Now the second half, pattern under tension, drop the core to the front, come from above and behind between the pattern and the core, release the tension on the pattern, 
pull the core under tension and pull the stitch up. Now for a pico. You start out just like you do normally with the first half of the stitch. Pattern under tension, drop the core to the back, bring the cord between the pattern and core, back above the pattern, release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, and then you pull your stitch up. Only, you don't pull it up all the way. You pull it up until you form the pico that you desire. Depends on what your pattern says as to what you want here. Some patterns will tell you to make a pico of a certain height in terms of inches or centimeters. Others will tell you to make a pattern, make a pico that is a number of units. A unit being the height of a stitch. So I'm making this one stitch, one stitch high or one unit high. You bring your pattern under tension, drop your core to the front, come from above, bring the core between the pattern and the core forward, release your tension, work your stitch up, and then you pull it up. This is 90% at least of what you're going to be doing whenever you're tatting. You make your double stitches, you make your picots, Make sure your core can move smoothly through your stitches. Now we're going to take this off and I'll show you how to apply these stitches to your hands. I wanted to show you this as I'm taking it off. If your first element of a pattern is a chain, it'll be very easy for you to accidentally pull the core right out of there. So what you can do is just tie a loose overhand knot at the beginning. That'll hold your core and then you can untie that knot later when you're ready to go on farther. So we'll finish untying this. When you start working tatting on your hands You'll work with either a single thread or a double thread. You'll use a double thread whenever you're making a chain, a single thread whenever you're making a ring. We'll start with a ring. To make a ring, you have to have a pattern section and a core section. And you do this by starting by pinching your yarn or thread and then wrapping it around your hand, making as big a workspace here as you can and pinching again. This area around your hand is the pattern section. The area beyond the pinch is the core. So, and you can see mine, this is too comfortable for me working, so I'm going to wind this up. Now we're going to make two double stitches, a pico, and two double stitches. Drop to the back, coming from the front, between your pattern section and your core section anywhere that's comfortable in your hand. Release the tension around your pattern section, pull your core section under tension, work the stitch up. Drop the core to the front, coming from behind anywhere that's comfortable between the pattern and the core. Release the tension on your pattern section, Pull your core section under tension. There's your first stitch. My working space here is no longer comfortable, so I hold the work that I've already done, the stitches, stitches I've already done, and I pull the core through, opening up my hand. Drop the pat core to the back. Pattern is under tension. Come from the front between the pattern and the core. Release the tension on the pattern. Pull the core taut. Pull your pat stitch up. Drop, drop the core section to the front. Come from behind between the pattern section and the core. Release the tension on the pattern. Pull the core under tension. Work the stitch up. 
Now I have two stitches and I'm going to make a pico. Drop the core to the back, coming from the front between pattern and core. Release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, pull it up, making your pico the size you want it. I then pinch that half hitch so that it stays and my pico stays in size. Drop the core to the front, bring the bobbin back between the pattern and core, release the tension on your pattern, pull your core under tension and work it up. Now you see I have a pico in my ring. You'll see where that has some value in just a minute. One more, one more double stitch. Drop the core to the back. Come from the front between the pattern and the core. Pull the core taut. Work your stitch up. Drop your core to the front. Pattern under tension. Come from behind between pattern and core. Release the pattern tension. Pull the core under tension. Work the stitch up. And you now have two stitch. We have two stitches, a pico, two stitches. And we close the ring by pulling on the core until that is nice and snug. And now we have a ring. Now we're going to make a chain and we're going to join to the pico. A pico has two uses, either a point of joining or just for decoration. When you get ready to make a chain, you're going to have two threads that you're holding. The top thread will invariably end up being your pattern thread, so we'll just work it around our hand. And I can't make a ring out of it, so I just twist it around my little finger to make a pat working area. And just drop that bobbin and let its weight hold it in place. Ah, I've got too much thread here on my core. It's too long for me. So let me work it back in. Drop the core to the back, bring the thread from the front to the back between the pattern and the core, release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension. And I'm deliberately leaving a space there because I'm going to show you how to join here in a minute. Drop the core to the front, bring the bobbin from behind between pattern and core, release the tension on the pattern. Pull tension, pull the core under tension, work the pat, stitch up. I'll make two. I need more space. So I unwind and then wind it back up. Pattern under tension. Drop the core to the back. Come from the front between pattern and core. Release the pattern tension. Pull the core under tension. Work the stitch up. Drop the core to the front, coming from behind between the pattern and core. Release the pattern tension. Pull the core under tension. Work the stitch up. Now we could make a pico here, or we could join in making, it sort of makes a false pico. And to make a join, you need a crochet hook that will grab your pattern core and will also fit through your pico. If you're working with very fine threads, you'll need a small crochet hook. So you bring the crochet hook in from the top into the existing pico, grab your pattern thread, pull it through, and make a loop. Now you bring your core through that loop, pull it taut, work the loop up. That is now the first half of your double stitch. So you drop the core to the front, come from behind, between the pattern and the core, release the tension on your pattern, 
pull the core under tension, pull your stitch up, and then you make. And I'm going to make one more because I was doing two pico, two pico. Drop the core to the back. Bring the pad bring the core between pattern and core. Release the tension on the pattern. Pull the core under tension. Pull the stitch up. Drop the core to the front, coming from behind, between pattern and core. Drop the tension on your pattern. Pull your core under tension. Work your stitch up. Now we have a chain that has been joined to our ring. Because that core can very easily slip through at this point, I would put an overhand knot in my core, a loose one, so that you can undo it later. And that way it will not pull through as you're working the rest of your pattern. This is all the stitches that we're going to use in making Martha's Snowflake. Left-handed tatting. <coughs> if you're a left-handed person, the instructions in the tatting are the same. It's just that everything is 180 degrees out. If you take it and flip, if you were able to flip the previous video 180 degrees vertically, then everything would look right to you. So I'm going to attempt to tat left-handed. I'm very right-handed. So a ring. Pinching between thumb and foot pointing finger, spread your pattern section around your hand, giving yourself as much working space as you can. Drop the core behind your hand, coming from the front, take the shuttle between the pattern section that's around your hand and the core section that you dropped and then back over, release the tension in your pattern, pull the core under tension, work the stitch up, and there you have a half hitch, the first half stitch. Drop the pat core to the front, keep your pattern under tension, come from behind, wherever it's comfortable, between the pattern and the core, release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, and then work your stitch up. One more time and then we'll do a pico. I was untwisting the thread there. I'm really cumbersome here with the left hand. Drop the core to the back, coming from the front, between the pattern and the core. Release the tension on your pattern. Pull the core taut work your stitch up. Now from the front, drop the core in the front, bring the, pat, bring the core back between the pattern and the core toward the front, release the tension on your pattern, pull your core under tension. To make a pico, you Start the first half of the stitch, drop the core to the back, coming from the front between pattern and core. Release the tension on your pattern, pull the core under tension, work your pattern up, leaving the space that you need for your pico. And now, working from the left, it's really important to me to pinch that ending spot. Drop the core to the front, bring the pat bobbin from behind between pattern and core, release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, work the stitch up, and there's your pico.
Do one more stitch. Drop the core to the back. Bob in between pattern and core. Release the tension on your pattern. Pull the core tension onto the core. Work the stitch up. I need some more working space. Drop the core to the front, coming from behind, between pattern and core. Release the tension on the pattern. Pull the core under tension. Work the stitch up. And now you close your ring, nice and snug, and we'll make a chain and come back to join to that existing pico. Wrap around the little finger, giving ourselves working space. Join, pinch the core into place, and I'm going to pull it. So I'm going to put that overhand knot that I recommended in before I even start tatting. Leaving a space, just like before, because I'm going to come back and join those. Drop the core to the back of your hand. Bob in between pattern and core. Release the tension on your pattern. Pull the core under tension and work the stitch up. Drop the core to the front. Come from behind and between pattern and core. Release the tension on the pattern. Pull the core under tension. Work the stitch up. That's one. Let me give myself more working space here. Open up my hand. Wind the thread around. Pattern under tension. Drop the core to the back. Bring the core between the pattern and the core loop. Release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, work the stitch up. Drop the core to the front, come from behind and between pattern and core. Release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, work the stitch up. And now we're going to join. And to make a join, you need a crochet hook that will grab your pattern core and will also fit through your pico. If you're working with very fine threads you'll need a small crochet hook. So you bring the crochet hook in from the top into the pe existing pico, grab your pattern thread, pull it through and make a loop. Now you bring your core through that loop Pull it taut, work the loop up. That is now the first half of your double stitch. So you drop the core to the front, come from behind, between the pattern and the core, release the tension on your pattern, pull the core under tension, pull your stitch up. And then you make, and I'm going to make one more because I was doing two pico, two pico. Drop the core to the back, bring the, pat bring the core between pattern and core, release the tension on the pattern, pull the core under tension, pull the stitch up. Drop the core to the front, coming from behind, between pattern and core. Drop the tension on your pattern, pull your core under tension, work your stitch up. Now we have a chain that has been joined to our ring. I thank you for watching. Have a good day and God bless.